Hello everyone and welcome to um, this book review. Today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, this book, Slavery at Sea, Terror, Sex, and Sickness in the Middle Passage by Shawanda Mustakim. Um, first, I just want to start off with a quote from the back. Slavery at sea includes heartbreaking stories of capture, breathtaking vignettes of torture, and harrowing tales of the Middle Passage that bring to life the terror that many enslaved people experienced at sea. This well-researched study also pays critical attention to how age, gender, and health informed the economic development of the international slave trade. So for those of you that are if U.S. history students or U.S. history students, you are likely to encounter the Middle Passage in your course. However, it's going to be a very short part of the curriculum. It's not something that is strongly emphasized, and in fact, a lot more emphasis is played um, on the the plantation system. But as Mustakim argues, it deserves a much larger part of the conversation. So let's start by talking about Professor Mustakim. She is an associate professor of history and of African and African American studies at Washington University in St. Louis. Um, Slavery at Sea was published in 2016 and was incredibly difficult to research. Um, in fact, she was told, there's no history, there's no sources, get out of this archive. And she pushed back and said, I know that there's stuff here. And she visited 25 different archives around the world um, and often found documents and information in areas just simply marked as miscellaneous. So her deep dive into the archives is really um, what is found in this book, Slavery at Sea. Um, it really is groundbreaking in the, the stories that she's able to bring to life to. In fact, that's how she views this work. She views herself as the vessel of these stories, that these stories matter, they're worthy of remembering, and that it is her role to bring them into the modern narrative. So in Slavery at Sea, it begins with a... Um, a story you just don't forget. Um, it begins with um, a slave trader in Africa, and he uh, wants to sell these two women, young, one young and one old. And um, what happens is the young one is purchased, and the the older woman is rejected. She's passed childbearing years, and that's the primarily uh, primary labor that is required of women at this time. It's reproductive labor. They came to the uh, to the Americas to produce more slaves. And um, when a, when this older woman was deemed um, uh, not appropriate for slavery, they uh, they took her in a canoe out to the ocean, and they just dropped her in and uh, watched as sharks attacked her body. And so that's how the, the book begins. It's, it's really emotional. It's really, um, uh, it, it brings to life that terror when you hear this story. And that really is, um, is an example of how the whole book goes, where she is trying to center the stories of people that have been rejected by history. Um, and in this case, it, she really is centering the story of a black woman. So um, let's dive in here a little more about the book. Uh, in her words, the overall purpose um, or what happens in slavery at sea is tracing the movement of bond people in, out, and through the watery space of the Atlantic Ocean. This book explores the social conditions and human costs embedded in the world of maritime slavery. So it's really not looking at what happens once they are in America or what um, the plantation system is about, but it's trying to reinsert the importance and the transformative effect of the Middle Passage on the um, bond people themselves. So in her book, she is 
specifically trying to address how different groups experience the middle passage, women, children, elderly, infirmed. She also makes the argument that it is impossible to import healthy bodies, whereas a lot of current scholarship emphasizes the role of the healthy adult black male. Um, and she argues no one came out of this healthy. She describes something called the human manufacturing process and um, that the violent and cheap preservation methods on board these slave vessels led to this uh, devastation, sickness, et cetera, um, that occurred. So let's go into this human manufacturing process. Uh, what she does um, what she does is she talks about how when you manufacture a good, there's a process where you have the warehousing, you have the transporting, and you have um, the delivery or the sale of the item. And this is where it's the making and unmaking of slaves that occurs. Um, and she wants to um, bring it to these simple terms because it's through the simplicity that you are then able to uncover the complexity of what's actually occurring. So here's what she says about the human manufacturing process. This process of unmaking, which no captive was able to circumvent once forced into the slaving industry, produced a dramatic climate of terror in the world of slavery at sea that resulted in mental disorientation, familial and communal separation, malnourishment, lack of sanitation and cleanliness, severe isolation, debilitating diseases, miscarriages, sexual abuse, psychological instability, and bearing witness to physical violence committed against kin and shipmates. And so those are the things that she addresses in the various chapters of her book. But she does have a key and unique focus uh, that I want to make sure to highlight here. Um, she wants to mine for the forgotten. She wants to dig in and find the stories of those who were not worthy of mention in a lot of ways. Um, she does talk about the healthy adult black male, but she gives a lot of intentional focus to girls and boys, nursing mothers, infants, teenagers, elderly males and females, the diseased and disabled. And so she talks about them in most images. When you do a Google search of the Middle Passage, um, you're going to find images of males, adult males. And really, she wants to bring the stories of the children, the women, etc., to life because these ships did carry them as well. So let's uh, continue here by looking at what, how she um, goes through her book here. So she starts off in Africa. She starts off looking at how were um, Africans involved in the slave trade? How were brokers, how were sailors involved in the purchasing, and what did that process look like? Um, then she moves on and begins to talk about age, gender, and health, um, and how that in fact um, impacted the purchase of bond people. And then she dives into the unhealthy conditions. So the vermin on board the ships, uh, the toxicity below deck. Um, she talks about um, just the awful conditions um, that would have affected the, um, not only the physical, but the psychological um, overall impact of slavery. Then these next chapters are, um, are really dense. Um, filled with stories. Uh, in Blood Memories, they talk about, uh, she talks about the violent resistance through insurrections, uh, through um, harm to one's body, and then how the sailors tried to resist those resistances by the uh, Africans who were being brought over as slaves. The next one, uh, chapter five, is really focused on suicide. And she tries to bring this um, into a different light where it's not focused on um, the idea of giving up, but rather the idea of choosing one's fate. Um, chapter six is about the cumulative effects of slavery, slavery on their overall well-being. And then chapter seven is going to be in America, 
um, how the various demographic groups affected the, um, the purchase of the people. Another quote, the stories of incredible suffering, pain, and resiliency that follow collectively remind that the Middle Passage was not about the final destination, but rather the violent production of slaves through the journey. So all of this, um, these seven chapters come together, a collection of stories um, to bring to life the trauma that was experienced on board the slave vessels. Now, the part that I really took away from the book is the um, her uh, contributions to the debate over the idea of agency. So the question is, can an enslaved person demonstrate true and complete agency? And if you're not familiar with this idea of agency, agency is just the ability to act free from restrictions with full self-determination without a predetermined fate. So it's the idea that can a person um, wholly make a decision? Um, without the fate or without the consequence already be, being predetermined. This is a debate that has gone on in history. And she really adds to that debate um, at the start, at the start of slavery with the Middle Passage. So in this she's going to give various examples of agency, these efforts to reclaim bodies. The insurrections um, were incredibly common. Uh, there's not just the, the story of Amistad, which is a very well-known case of an insurrection, but they were, it happened in one out of six slave ships. And she brings into it the role of women. Women were often kept on the top deck, not by the men, um, which led them incredibly vulnerable to sexual abuse um, by the sailors. But it also gave them an important role in the insurrections. They often were able to obtain materials um, and access things that would provide um, for the potential for a more successful rebellion. Suicide um, is an act of agency uh, where people were able to achieve permanent independence. So they were able to decide um, how they were going to, um, how their fate would end. Uh, abortion, she spent some time on this. Um, a significant number of women on board these ships either came on pregnant or became pregnant on board the slave vessel. And despite risking um, their own self, um, they often committed abortion to ch make sure that their, their child did not have to be part of this process food, there was refusal to eat, as well as poisoning of crew that would happen. And then also she spent some time looking at song and dance and how they were able to more publicly express their discontent. They were forced to exercise um, through song and dance, but they were able to um, do it in a way that expressed their discontent. So she writes, these measures fostered feelings of personal authority Yet their control is more symbolic and never without anxiety. So really highlighting that it's not necessarily a true uh, display of agency. However, there were various resistance methods used. So important contributions. Really, slavery does not begin at the plantation. And history teachers who don't emphasize the Middle Passage are... Um, contributing to this misconception. Uh, the biggest contribution I see is her mining the forgotten, uh, her work through the archives and finding these stories and bringing them to life and telling us that they matter and are worthy of remembering is a huge component of this book. And then enriching the conversation about agency is a really important contribution. Um, so I highly recommend picking up a copy of Slavery at Sea and taking some time to um, think through the importance of this book on American history.